where you are, won't you just begin to honor God and exalt Him and lift Him up and thank Him? He's taken you from glory to glory to glory. And I believe even as we talk with our next guest, God is going to continue to penetrate your heart with His Word. It will be a now word, a relevant word, and a relatable word. Dr. Asa Andrew, no strangers, a leading expert on not only nutrition and health, but he is also a board certified physician with postgraduate study extensively in biochemistry and nutrition. He has a syndicated talk show on empowering your health. He's been on Fox, CBS, NBC, ABC, all the alphabet, BET, everything you can imagine as a voice and an expert, but he has a story. He's God's chosen. And you never appreciate the glory without knowing the story. He's not only going to tell you where he is, but how he got there. Remember, God's no respecter of persons. Doctor, it's so good to have you. Yeah, thank you. So thank blessed. you so much, Paul. You know, amen. You know, it's so funny. Whenever you do these shows, you have to read a bio and you talk about their accolades and things that are on the wall and things they've done. But the reality is, can I just... Tell the people who I really am. Share the real story. Can I? Because the reality is, I'm just a mess up <laughs> that couldn't measure up, but God lifted me up. You see, it really. You see, Psalm 40 says that I waited patiently upon the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. And he set my feet upon a rock. And he gave me a firm place to stand. And he put a new hymn of praise to my God on my mouth. Many will see and learn who my God is. That is who I am. I am simply an average man, Paula, that needs a big God. And I have a passion to see the health of the church and God's people transformed one life at a time. Amen. Now people look at you now and there's tremendous success. A board certified physician, I mean a two hour syndicated talk show, an expert, great doors, tremendous success. But it didn't start there. Where When you say I was a mess up that God lifted up, an ordinary guy, talk about it. You know, it's amazing. I was born and still to this day I don't know who my real mother and father are. I was born and placed in an orphanage. I, I don't know who my, my mother, my, my daddy, I don't know who they are. But one day, two amazing people in Nashville, Tennessee, they came and they adopted me. And they gave me a wonderful home, a great place to live. They loved me, they took care of me. And the funny thing about it is, is that all my life, it was amazing. I knew there was something different. I knew that, that it's almost like I was chosen. But I didn't know what that meant because I wasn't told that I was adopted until I was around 13 years old. And it's amazing when you have that feeling and when, when, when I was told that I was adopted, Paula, something happened. The disconnect hit and it hit hard. Because if you don't know, if you know where you come from, you're always connected. Right. But if you all of a sudden don't know where you come from, you feel disconnected. Even though there was love, even though there was grace, even though there was a home. I, I grew up in an amazing home with a wonderful mother and father that loved me and took care of me, and a sister. And, and it was amazing. It was the perfect little family. But there was a disconnect. When I learned that I was adopted, that was when it all began. That's when the search began. Because I knew there was this thing on the inside of me that God had created me for. Although I didn't know it was God, I knew there was just something stirring up on the inside of me. And I just didn't know what it was. was and time, it took time to pull that out. Was it a tremendous sense of loss of identity? Yes, that is it. And when there's loss of identity, I mean, it's really, it, that's the most significant thing. Because they said when there's loss of identity, there's the search for significance. But significance is really the search of, am I worthy or valuable to be loved? That's right. And so that, that's what hit you head on when you were 13. It hit me head on because I had to realize why was I left? Why was I not wanted? Why was I rejected? Much like the baby floating in the river mm -hmm. many years ago. Little baby Moses. He must have gone through that. But finally, on October 14th, 1993, in a football film room at Florida State University, I got reconnected. You see, I realized, 
I realized that no matter how hard I tried, no matter how many bottles of pills I took or how many bottles I drank, no matter how many girls I might have hooked up with to try to fill the void, looking for a mama, mm -hmm. no matter what I did, it was never enough. How many fixes have you tried trying to find the right thing in your life to make you feel connected again? You see, the only thing that will ever make you feel connected is the blood-stained hand from heaven that can reach down. Because sin is always like a slimy pit. And your identity, everything in life, if you don't have Jesus as the centerpiece of your life, if He's not your identity, then you'll climb on this slimy pit and you'll keep sliding back down until He reaches down. When you look up, if you can learn to fall down on your back and not just look to yourself, but look up. And not look up to a bottle or a pill, but look up to a bloodstained hand of Jesus. Let him reach down and pick you up. He will, Psalm 40, set your feet upon a solid rock and give you a firm place to stand. And it was then that I realized who I was in Christ. It was then that I realized that I had a Father in heaven and I knew my identity. I saw my reflection in him. And Romans 8, 15 says we receive a spirit of adoption where we can cry, Abba, which means Daddy, really. And that's when I realized who I was. I was going to say you were in a film room at Florida State. and on the you, football team. On the, right, right, on the football team watching this and you heard the gospel. There was a man that came in, shared the gospel. He had arms as big as Texas, probably 23 inch arms. So I said, I got to listen to this guy. I was into working out and that sort of thing. And, and he began to share the gospel. And it, it absolutely transformed my life that I realized that God loved me enough that, you know, among all the things in life that, that God could do, among all the people He could love, He loved me. And that's what's so amazing about people. They need to realize that, that you know, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've become, you can always come home just like the prodigal son. God will always have open arms for you. Always. And that's what I realized. God had to, God had to teach me that, that His love was amazing. His grace and His mercy was unsurpassed. So here you now have this experience that that empty love tank is filled because you know the love of God. Right. And when you know the love of God, Ephesians chapter 3 says, then you have all the fullness of God. That's right. It gave you that. I say you only overcome your condition when you know your position, when you know who you are in Christ. That's right. So how did you go from there, the, the love to finding your purpose and really becoming the success of who you are today? How did you give direction to Paul, it's amazing. What happened is that I realized once I got, the night I got saved, I had never spoken public in my life. I was the kind of guy that when, when we would have projects in college, I would pay somebody to do the speaking for me. <laughs> I mean, I was so nervous in front of people, and I never thought I had anything to say mm. Mm. worth the value. And, and so what happened was, that night I went home and I pulled out a Bible that was wrapped in the wrapper still. And you hear these stories about people going home and they open up the Bible and, and you know, they just flip it open and they just have some revelation. Well, listen, it really happened to me. I'm serious. <laughs> it's not silly. So if it happened to you, it's okay. And I opened up the Bible, pulled off the wrapper, never read the Bible in my life, opened it up to Joshua 1 verse 9. And it said, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. My daddy is with me wherever I go. But that night, that night, amen. That night I knew, Paul, I knew I was called to preach the gospel. That night I knew it. God put it, if I've ever heard God's voice, I heard it that night and I didn't know what it meant. And not even, I, I planned on going to, uh, to, to get my um, degree to be a physician. I moved to Atlanta, and a month later, I get a call from one of the top soul-winning ministries in the country. We did feats of strength, been on TBN, ripped phone books, busting baseball bats, blowing up hot water bottles so they explode. And all of a sudden, I go from being born again to being all over the world, busting stuff for Jesus and telling people about the good news of Christ. And I'm scared to death to be on stage. What in the world is going on? <laughs> but, but, you know, just like you, God put a message in your heart. He gave you a voice. He took you from where you were, not knowing who you were, and, and put you in a position, positioned you insignificance, not for your own head or not for your own ego, but for to bless the body of Christ. That's what he did with you. A woman preacher? Are you kidding me? Right. He pulled you out the same way. 
And look what he's doing with the nations, with your voice. You're a mouthpiece for God. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I completely understand. If he did he, it for you, right. and he did it for me, where's the camera? Not one person sitting out there, where, where am I? Not one person sitting out there has the same retina of someone else. Listen to me, I know this. Not one person out there has the same hair follicle as another person. Not one person sitting on your couch in a bar in a hospital has the same thumbprint of anybody else. God designed you, custom made you for a great purpose in life. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Where am I? Not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Psalm 139 says, I knit you together in your mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. When you were woven together in the secret place and not one day, not one day was ordained without God knowing about it and writing it in his book. God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. But what I want to ask you tonight is what Paul has gone through in myself and the other guests on this program. Are you willing to go through the pain of the process of what it takes to get to your purpose? Was a Michael Jordan ready to shoot free throws eight hours a day to become Michael Jordan? That was pain and that was a process. Was Tiger Woods willing to get up every single morning with his father and hit the golf course this tall with clubs sticking up over his head? Was he willing to go through the pain of the process of practice to get where he is? That's what you have to focus on. Because if you can make it through the pain of the process, I promise you, you will find your purpose. You see, and that's, that's the word of the Lord for you. God continues to say over and over through this night. Star said one of the most powerful sentences I've ever heard. She said, I embrace the pain. I think most people want to run from the pain. And they don't understand. Like when a woman goes to, to bring forth in transition, to bring forth that which she's carried for nine months. And as she goes into transition, that's the most painful part. They call it labor for a reason. And when that baby's head gets ready to crown, I mean, she's passing out between contractions. It's hurting so bad. And the doctor says, one more push. You can do it. And she's like, I don't think I can. <laughs> so where she slaps her husband and says, you did this to me. You know? <laughs> right. and it's like, that's I right. can't believe this. But if she'll just push and bear down one more time, she's going to bring forth that which has been birthed in pain. And people don't realize if they'll just keep pushing, not give up, keep going, there's a time that you'll hold your promise and you'll look back and you'll have a memory of what you went through, but you'll it. be disassociated. You won't that's feel it. the pain anymore. That's right. And that's, that's the process. Tell me about those challenging times. I just went through the most challenging time. Can I share that? Yeah. For the last two years, I went from preaching the gospel full time and evangelism to moving into health ministry where one of my close friends, he and I would go into the largest churches in the country from the biggest to the church of 50, telling people that God has a plan for their life, number one, but that you need the health of the body that God gave you, the temple, to fulfill the call of God on your life, to fulfill your purpose. That was two years ago that that began. And as God put me on the platform, I never realized the kind of pain that I would go through <laughs> with the words that were coming out of my mouth to his body. In November of 2004, my best friend, my dad, was diagnosed with lung cancer. Four months after I began preaching on health. 
And I didn't understand why. I didn't understand what was happening. So I began to aggressively try to help him with everything that I knew in my knowledge. And, and for some reason, the cancer would get worse. And he did chemo and he did radiation. Then it went in remission. And I thought, this is unbelievable. God, you're amazing. You're such an awesome healer. And then all of a sudden, I felt in my heart that I was supposed to move back to Nashville, January of this year. And I moved back in town, and, and because I was preaching all over the, the country, and I was giving people a book, and I was giving people materials to help them, but then I was having so much response being a physician. Can you open up a clinic so you can help us one-on-one? -on -one? Can you coach us with our health one-on-one? -on -one? And I began to ask God about that, and, and God began to open up doors. And when I moved back to Nashville, doors opened up for that clinic to happen. And so the clinic opened up. It's a wellness clinic where I take care of people's health, body, mind, and spirit, uh, restoring people from cancer, diabetes, heart disease, all these issues, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, restoring the body of Christ, their health. But in January, the, the same month I moved back, my dad's cancer came back. And they say when lung cancer comes back, it comes back with a vengeance. And I spent, if I wasn't in a clinic or if I wasn't on the road preaching the gospel, I, I was sitting in a hospital and watched my dad, <laughs> my hero, <laughs> with tubes all throughout his body, <laughs> trying to regain the very gift that was given to him at birth, his health. I didn't see him get healed. I didn't see him change, but I did see him accept Christ into his heart in a hospital bed. But I, hold on. I didn't understand if God had called me out of the masses to tell his people the good news about health that's in his word, why would he allow me to go through the pain of this process of watching my father suffer with one of the most brutal diseases that is out there. To watch his body go from this strong man that I watched growing up, wither up into a 150 pound man, living on oxygen, struggling to take his last breath. Why God, why? As I sat in a hospital room and watched him take his last breath with my, with my mother, I said, God, why? Why? I found out. Whatever God's anointed you to do, whatever God's called you to do, that message is where you will experience your greatest source of pain. And it's in the process. But I will tell you this. I have learned so much through that. And right after my father died, I spoke with Dave Ramsey, who's a financial radio talk guy. Yeah. I had a radio show that was already paid for, not, had to spend one dime in, one, in, in four weeks. It went from one hour to two hours. Now they're already talking three hours. It's already starting to syndicate. The favor that has poured out through the pain. Because God wants to know, will you stay the course, Sarah? Will you wait? Will you wait? Will you wait 90 years before you have your first child? Will you go through the pain of that process? Noah, will you wait through the process? Will you gather all the animals when it's sunshine and put them on a boat? Joseph, when your brothers turn their back on you and they throw you down in a pit, will you stay the course so that I'll put you in high places? Pain to our purpose. Pain to our purpose. And that's the thing. Just like Gatorade, Paula, God wants to know, is it in you? That's good. Because, because here's the thing. Jesus went all the way through the pain of the process. But he was called in the beginning as our Savior, as God's Son. But he went through the pain of the process, even with a bloody death on the cross, and was raised on the third day, that all would have salvation, who would believe and call upon his name. It was the pain of the process he was trying to teach us. And he wants to know, is it in you? And will you stay the course? Because God has a great plan for your life. He has a great purpose for your life. And you can't fulfill your purpose if you drop off in the pain 
of the process. But I promise you that if you will endure the pain, if you will spend time on your knees, if you'll let your heart ache and let it pour out, I promise you, friend, that God will bring you out and you will experience more favor in your life than you've ever experienced before. Thank you. The word of the Lord to you right now. And to the God we still have our. That's the word of the Lord. And how do I say thank you? Like I've had to say to every thank guest, thank you. Thank you for persevering. Thank you for paying the price. Thank you. Thank you for everything. See, sometimes people look at your glory in life. And they, they, I say the anointing disguises in a masket. You'll never know the breaking a person has gone through to be a blessing to you. Jesus said, okay, I'm going to take these little loaves and these fish, and I'm going to first break them, then bless them, and then they're going to feed the multitudes. Anytime you start feeding multitudes, it's come through a process of being broken and being blessed. And here's the word of the Lord for you. Deuteronomy says... The secret things belong to the Lord, and the revealed things unto the children of men. Some things we just graduate again from that place called faith to that place called trust. My mind won't ever comprehend this, but my heart knows you're a good God, God, and I trust you. I trust that's the word of the Lord for someone right now. You don't understand the breaking, but there's blessing coming forth. They meant it for evil, Genesis 50:20. God allowed it for good. There's a purpose to save much people alive.